Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday. It's April 6, 2019. And I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. Uh, if you haven't seen my announcement, I have created a backup channel just in case. Um, um, Chad's strikes against my channel succeed and uh, I have a place to go to still upload some devotionals and still to speak to you. I'm going to put the uh, name on the screen. Um, it's called At the Foot of the Cross um, in you on YouTube. So um, I encourage you to go and subscribe to the channel just in case um, I get shut down because um, I wouldn't want to lose contact with you. Uh, but you know, I'm also have a page on Facebook called at the foot of the cross where uh, my videos will also be. And I have a uh, Facebook um, personal page where I also upload my videos. So I'm in other areas on the internet. Um, I have these two devotionals for you today, but before I proceed, I always like to start with the Our Father. So please join me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, Father, Heavenly Father, Jesus, Son of God, Holy Spirit, I love, I love all of you from the bottom of my heart. I want to bless all of you in Jesus' name. I cannot wait to come home. Amen. All right. Uh, this is called materialism, and we all need to hear it. We all need to know how this can creep into our lives and take control. Okay, like the ivy that I speak about, how it climbs and clings. We're in Luke uh, chapter 16, verse 13, and it says, You cannot serve God and mammon. Mam mammon. <laughs> That's a hard word. Mammon. Yep, that means you cannot serve two masters. The Bible strictly forbids idolatry. One of the Ten Commandments declares, you shall not make yourself for yourself a carved image. You shall not bow down to them nor to serve them in Exodus 20. Uh, verse 4 and 5. You could read all about that. Now, when we think of the church, the Catholic Church, we know that there's all kinds of saints that have been venerated. But these saints do not have power to bow to them, to kiss the statue, to pray to the statue, to ask them to answer prayers, they have no power. The only power is in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord despises this. Okay, he despises idolatry. But almost anything can become an idol, something we worship and serve in place of God. It might be success, you might get so caught up in trying to be successful at whatever you set your goals for that you push everything in life away, including God, and um, 
your priority is to attain that goal. All right? You put all your knowledge, everything that you've learned, your money behind it, everything to try to reach for that goal. That is idolatry. Um, it could be pleasure. All right? You, your flesh could be screaming all the time to go out drinking and partying and smoking dope and, um, you know, uh, you know, just constantly every day or as often as you can. The goal in your life is to get back to that party with friends, laughing, horsing around, um, partaking in folly, drinking, eating. Uh, smoking, uh, taking drugs, getting boozed up with alcohol, uh, becoming loud, boisterous, and arrogant, and vulgar. I mean, you know, people can't wait for opportunities for this. This is idolatry. Or possessions or money. You know, <laughs> the root of e money is the root of all evil. People uh, know that money can buy them an instant fix, you know, like the new electronics, uh, which give them the momentary pleasure. But then, you know, everything you get gets old and then you want something new to fill its shoes. OK, uh, how many of you got excited when the smartphone came out and then all of a sudden you realize that your battery doesn't hold its charge anymore and things are starting to get slow and all this new technology is coming out and there you go to the 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 Verizon store to try to upgrade it or fix it and they say oh, we don't make those batteries anymore you got to upgrade to the new one we'll give you a free one if you give us a contract for two years you know this is all Satan roping you in to keep you feeding you the idolatry over and over and over again and uh, you know the money doesn't only buy the phones it'll buy you a nice big house a boat um, Jewelry, um, you know, things that people um, um, flash because this to them is their worth. They don't know what their worth is to God. So the, to them, their worth is having the Rolex on their wrist and having the big yacht and having the houses and having, you know, um, you know, all of whatever the world can offer you with how much money you have to obtain it. This is all a trap of Satan. Okay? These, all these things serve in the place of God. It might be success or pleasure or possessions or money or anything else that we let control our lives. You see, we let it in because it appeals to us. It makes us feel that we are empowered. But you know, if you're a child of God, your power is the Lord's power. The power of God is behind you. See? Satan convinces you that you can be God. Like he convinced Eve in the garden, which is why we're in this mess in the first place. They aren't necessarily wrong within themselves. Like, you know, if you have a nice car... Fine, you know, God doesn't have anything against you having a nice vehicle. As long as every time you're in it, you're not absorbing the the beauty of the car and the elegance of the car, and you're not flashing it in front of people saying, look what I have, and you can't wait to get back into the car because it's your identity. You see, this is why things in themselves are not bad. It's how... We let them take control of our allegiance. We give our allegiance to the idol. Okay? And we make them the most important thing in our life. The Bible rejects idols for at least two reasons. One, idols are false. They take the place of God to you. Did you know that? They cannot save us, number one. They cannot change our lives for the better, like Jesus can. They can't transform your life. They'll only give others the illusion. 
okay, that have less than you, that you are more than them, see? Second, idols cut us off from God. We substitute them from God. And as a result, we turn our backs on him and we never come to know him and uh, love him as we actually should in our walk. Has any idols ta uh, taken God's rightful place in your life? We all need to sit back and examine our lives. It could be anything. It could be sports. It could be food. We're worshiping at the altar. It could be our nationalities, you know. People are obsessed with their ethnicity. This divides you because everybody that embraces and is prideful about their uh, ethnic background, uh, they feel they're, they're better than uh, another ethnic background. This, this polarizes people from one another. This is sinful. Okay? Um, we shouldn't let this happen. God has commanded, quotes, you shall not have other gods before me. Exodus 23. All right, and this next one is called Strangers in the World, and it's from 1 Peter 2.11, and it says, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires. People, this is the words of the Lord, okay? Aliens from other countries are rarely shown the welcome mat. They are often accepted reluctantly or with a tongue-in-cheek attitude. They may even find themselves victims of discrimination, rejection, or intolerance. The Bible says that we as Christians are like aliens and strangers in the world. Our citizenship is in heaven, which is our real home. As long as we live on this earth, we don't quite fit in. I remember one time, a very, not very long ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I was crying over feeling very alone and alienated and I was talking to the Lord about how difficult this is to be separate. And he said to me the word misfit. And I said, yeah, Father, I am a misfit. I agree with you because I don't fit anywhere. Nothing feels right to me when I go into these different areas of the world. It, nothing feels like I belong there. Okay. Our customs are different, our goals are different, our ways of living are different, and our concerns are different. So if you even know other Christians who are carnal, all right, and you have no interest in these earthly things, but they do, the things that you're concerned about, walking righteously and holy, these other Christians are not. They're resting in the, on their faith and drowning in their sins. Your goal is to is to push in with the ministry of the Holy Spirit to that 100% perfection, okay? And theirs is not because they say you cannot achieve this <laughs> and the Lord gave you a helper, okay? You see the dichotomy here? You see the difference, the division in the body of Christ? Yeah, like politics, you have those on the right and you have those on the left. The left want uh, the homosexuality. They don't want to uh, offend people. They're politically correct. They're the Antifa of the church. This is the division in the church. The ones who are walking holy the way the Lord commanded us to. Walking in the righteousness that we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And we abide and we listen to the commands of the Holy Spirit, not to the commands of our flesh. This is a division, okay? And as Christ followers, 
instead of followers of this world, we may find ourselves scorned and rejected or even persecuted. Yeah, yeah. Didn't I just post a video about a week ago about, uh, you know, um, BS coming out and saying, we uh, we now shun you from the Christian community and you are accursed because you are not twisting the gospel of grace just like we are. You are following the Father's commands. You love the Lord so much that it's all over you. And you're not going to football games and you're not living the world. You are guilty of lordship. This is what's going on between the body of Christ. So they'll persecute you. The carnal Christians will persecute the ones that are following the Lord's commandments. If so, we shouldn't be surprised because Jesus warned, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you, John 15, 20. But never forget, if you are a citizen of the kingdom of God, and someday you will be home. Now, they also call themselves citizens of heaven. They also declare that they're being persecuted by Satan. But really what it is, they're being chastised by the Lord. And they can't tell the difference. Because if they don't know that they were commanded to be holy and live righteously, then they don't understand the difference between uh, a, an attack from Satan or an attack or, or, or chastisement from the Lord. They don't know the difference, people. You have to understand this and pray for these people. And they will shortly see, very, very soon, that they will have to prove out all that faith that they are uh, proclaiming that they have because the only ones that are going to rise out of here is the bride and the remnant of her seed the ones that have pushed in and allowed the ministry of the holy spirit to uh, conform them to the likeness of jesus christ okay and uh, they will be here through a lot of persecution if they make it because Jesus said when he comes either in the second watch or the third watch okay um, those that are alive and remain okay will be caught up in the clouds so if you uh, made it through the storm and then you'll get caught up but there were consequences on the other side for these carnal Christians uh, the further away they are from their righteous walk, the further away they will be from Jesus in the heavenlies. They will not be able to come close to the to the throne or the holy of the holies. They will. The further they walk in carnality, is the further away they will be from His presence in the kingdom. Oh yeah, they'll be saved, but they think that because they could roll around in their sin, that it's just hay and stubble. Oh, you know, I'd rather do this, you know, big football thing here and, uh, you know, and uh, worship, worship sports. But, you know, it'll just get burned up in hay and stubble and everything will be fine when I get to the other side. Um, I don't need my crown because I'm going to put it at Jesus' feet anyway, you know. Uh, and I don't need gems. All I just want to do is get out of here. You know, I want to escape. I want to stay in my worldly carnal uh, environment. And I want to escape. Okay. I want to be righteous enough to escape. But you will escape. But you, you'll be as far away from him on the other side as you were here in your walk. Did you ever think about that? That that is going to be a consequence that you're going to suffer when you get to the other side not being able to sup hmm? you still have time to turn around here okay you have time to change your mind and you need to first repent you need to repent with a sincere and sorrowful heart and come to your knees in tears to the Lord that you have strayed from him 
and that you did not put him first in your life. You know who I'm talking to, right? You know. But to those who don't know Christ, today is your day of salvation. I'm going to put the salvation video right behind this. You want to live forever. You want to see the Lord. You want to live in a world that's peaceful and loving and kind without hate, without all the ugly things that we have to encounter here. You will not. You will not go to heaven or see your loved ones who believed before you unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I encourage you to do so now. Okay, we are running out of time, people. This peace deal is coming out. It's going to change the climate of the world forever. And when I say climate, I just mean that the world will never be the same. I always want to remind you that I love you and Jesus loves you. Never forget how much Jesus loves you. Never forget it. I love you and he loves you so very much. Don't ever forget it. He's patient. He's waiting for you now. Bring everything you've got and throw it down at the altar at the foot of the cross. Okay? And he'll welcome you with open arms. He'll clean you up, erase your sins, and he'll never look back. What a glorious feeling that is. God bless you and follow along. <music>